malware unpacking. Packers, yay. Packers are evil. No. Uh, pack, Packers back in the day, way back when, Packers were created as a way of reducing the size of an executable. Um, back in the day, back when, there were questions about whether zip was free or not because of the proprietary algorithm and whether or not you had to pay for it and do you want the program that you're giving out to people them to have to download and buy another program just to so transferring over the network. Um, we didn't used to have gigabit networks or FIOS and transferring files was slow. So if you can reduce the size of your PE file, uh, people would appreciate it. Bus Packers, UPX is a well-known one. Very easy to to unpack UPX. There's, there's actually the UPX utility that packs it. You can use it to, to unpack it. Uh, it was designed that way because it was designed to simply reduce the size of the executable, not to be crazy sneaky and not allow people to you know, see what's going on. Uh, since then, things have changed. And the packers out there that like PEID will detect, um, it'll, it'll detect UPX, but other things like uh, ASPAC or UPAC, um, those, I mean, if, you, if you look them up, they're, they're termed as protectors because it's about obfuscating the code, not letting the people be able to, who are analyzing it, be able to actually see what's going on. Um, and it's not just malware authors that use these. The other thing, um, I think on the, forget, one of the, the packers, the, their website was saying how um, the Google, I don't know, Chrome or, or one of the Google things um, was, a, was a big deal. They were using their protector, you know, to prevent people from, from reverse engineering their tools. So it's, it's legitimate companies will use these to try to protect their proprietary information as well. Um, yeah. So what a yeah. I I already gave an example of a very simple packer at the beginning where it, it comes in and just adds a a new section um, and then it changes the entry point in the header to point to their new section and all that does is is write over the uh, the sections that were obfuscated by the packer. Um, in order to unpack them. It's just one example. Um, I can stub. Yeah, that would be the, that new section would be the, the unpacking stub, if you will, um, where it just, it runs that in order to unpack and then after the end of that stub, it um, jumps into, not necessarily with the jump instruction, though sometimes it jumps into the unpacked code. Uh, yeah, here's that entropy detection. Um, they can, they don't necessarily, but they can compress the data, which is is why you would see the, the higher entropy than with other, or with the original one. Unusual section names, that's something that some hackers or protectors will do um, your your typical section names, text, our data, data. Um, they'll either replace those or they'll add new ones. We saw with with the with one of them there was like a saber section that the entry point was pointing into as an example. Those are things that are really easy to identify though. So the folks who are doing the custom hackers will not do that. They'll just use the regular section names. It's all about trying to, to blend in, to not look uh, out of place. All right. Tools. Um, yeah, in order to identify hackers, PEID, Mutant Red Current will identify some. Uh, the CFF Explorer identify feature will identify them. 
Uh, and then there's the, the disassembling and debugging your kind of standard IDA Pro. And then what we're going to look at, polydebug and immunity. Now I mentioned UPX. It's easy to unpack that. There is a unpacker for that. Automatically do that. You may ask, are there, are, is it, you know, are there automated unpacking programs out there or, or standard, you know, routines that do this? It must be a big problem. There are um, certain, certain places will sell unpackers for, for certain things, but it's, it's one of these um, constant struggle of the, the legitimate companies who are, sending, who are selling these PE protectors want to be able to protect their customers' intellectual property. And so they are constantly trying to, to put in tricks in there to make it difficult for automated unpacking. Uh, also, the automated unpackers will only be able to unpack stuff that they know about. So if you come across something that, that somebody has, has customized, it's not going to take care of that. So you really have to know how to deal with different types of unpackers. Um, I think it's almost better to deal with somebody who's writing their own rather than using a commercial one because writing a packer is hard and they're only going to put as much effort into it as, as they have time for slash um, uh, have, have the, the effort to do or the technical capabilities to do. And so it will be easier, this is my hypothesis, it will be easier to deal with someone who's running a custom packer than to deal with one of the commercial ones. Okay. So some of the things that these automated on packers are going to look for and some of the things that, that we're going to look for is the, uh, uh, the, the transition of the code uh, potentially from one section to another. Like I said, if the simplest one is they just tack on a, an additional section, entry point points to that, and it executes, and after it finishes executing in that section, it jumps to the original section that's now unpacked. As soon as you see that, that change in from working in this memory location to that different uh, section of memory, then that's a potential um, identif identification that uh, the unpacker is finished. And there's actually a feature in the debugger where you can say, um, trace through this and break when you see the section change. Um, that really basic but really helpful. You can also look for um, load library get proc address. When you come across a PE file that doesn't have a lot of imports in it, but you see it does have a little library get proc address, uh, that likely means it's dynamically uh, building or rebuilding the import address table in memory. And typically, not always, but typically when they do that is when the malware is after the unpacker stuff finishes. Um, but right before it transitions to the uh, to the unpacked code, it will have to recreate the import address table. So if you look for calls to load library get proc address, or you you break on them, then you can potentially get through your uh, unpacking code and get to almost to the point where you're at the original entry point. which is basically what's in the manual impact detector. Um, tail transitions, though, to, to go into more detail, like I said, it could be a, a simple jump to a specific address, and that's a, a good way to identify the end of the unpacking stuff. Uh, the, the simpler ones will do that. Push, followed by a return. Basically the same idea because return 
pops off of the top of the stack into the EIP. Um, so if you have a push before a return, that giveaway right there. Push A, pop A, that's not necessarily a, a transition technique per se, but it's a technique that packers will use to uh, save the state of the registers before they go into their unpacking code. Um, basically, the um, everything that's been done up until the their code is, is being called, uh, everything that's being set up in the registers, uh, they will do a push A, save all that state, and then immediately before they do their jump into the unpacked code, they'll do a pop A. So if you see a push A at the beginning, you can then look for that pop A. Um, What's the A first? All. Instead of the instead of giving it that that is the full instruction. Push A is instead of push ECX or push EDX. Push, all the push A. Push all registers. Push them all in the set. Pop A is the the do the same do the popping in the inverse order, obviously. If you, yeah. Um, so you can, there, there's two different ways I typically use for dealing with this when I see this. There's a tracing that you can do in all debug or, or immunity debug where you can set a trace condition that stops when it sees a particular or when it encounters a particular instruction. I'll say trace until you see a pop A. That's one way of dealing with it. The other way is to single step um, through the push A and then go onto the uh, stack and actually go to the one of the memory addresses on the stack, set a hardware on access breakpoint on that memory location because you know that when the pop A happens at the end, it's going to access that memory location and you'll break then. That's another way to do it. Um, the, the hardware breakpoint is a quicker way of doing it because the tracing takes a lot of time. But, but both of those are methods I've used. So back to the previous section, Jeff about said that some debugger, I don't know whether it was immunity or what, has a heuristic option for when someone transitions from one section to a different section. Which debugger was it? Um, I believe both all debug and immunity have that. Is it built in or is it a plugin? Or? No, it's built in. Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll show when I bring up the interface, I'll show that. Yeah, this is the, the that hopping between sections. Um, I'll debug. I'm pretty sure it's in immunity as well, since immunity is based on uh, I'll debug. Um, yeah, this is the whole. If you use software breakpoints, watch out, because that where that software breakpoint was set, it might be overwritten by the unpacker. There's some really nasty unpackers out there. Actually in here, you'll see. Um, and, and as I said before, breaking on things like uh, library loading or unloading, I'll show you where in all I debug that option is. Um, or, or if you know a particular um, API gets called, you can try to set a breakpoint at the start of one of those functions. Um, most of the time that I've dealt with, um, the, the load library get proc address will work if I can't find the tail transition um, or the pop A, push A stuff. So typically what I'll do is, is basically down this line. Try to find a tail transition. If I can't find that easily, you know, is it doing a push A? Um, if I can't find that easily, maybe this section hop thing. Um, 
for the, the library voting on loaning. Um, it's just this this is the the how do I put it? The least sketchy. It's not quite the quite the right word. Basically when you're do this, when you run until you see a pop A, that's a that's a very heuristic way of doing it and you're not quite sure you can't say for definite that there is going to be a, a pop A in there. Or when you do a section hop, look for a section hop, you can't quite say for sure that there is going to be a section hop. But if you actually look for a tail transition and you find one, there's a tail transition there because you found it. Um, and you can execute up to that point and jump from there. So this is typically the first thing I'll, I'll try to find. Question. Yes. This is, um, that or no execute flags or anything like that mess up unpackers because you're taking data right, you're unpacking it, and then you're executing it, right? So what used to be data is now executable code, right? So data executes protection. And I, and I don't know a lot about how it's actually implemented, so I may be asking a stupid question. Mm -hmm. So my understanding about how that works mm -hmm. is that it prevents sections that are marked as not executable or not marked as executable from being able to execute stuff in there. Right. But what a packer will do is the stuff, it, it knows which sections it's going to need to execute, so it's actually going to mark those sections as executable. That's my understanding of, of how that works. That's what I thought. That, talked about that. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Dumping on packed code. So this is this really is the main reason why I don't use IDA for debugging. Typically, uh, I'm not aware of any good plugins for dumping from memory to disk via IDA. Ollie dump is a really cool plugin for all the debug that allows you to do it real easy. Question I'll, there. I'll show you that. When you yep. say dumping from IDA, you mean dumping and reconstructing into a PE file? Or you yes, dumping and reconstructing to a PE file. Yeah. So that's that's kind of that's kind of the goal. That's what's going to make it if you dump the from memory the unpacked code into a PE file format, you can then take that and load it up into IDA and do your normal analysis on it. If you just dump it to disk as a blob of data, sure, it's theoretically possible to load that up in IDA and do your analysis on it. It's going to be a lot harder. It's not going to know about the import address table. It's not going to know about it. It's, yeah, no. <laughs> Don't do it. So, so basically that plugin not only copies the content of wherever the unpacking is finished, it looks at the current state of the import address table, um, the export address. It tries to find the... And then it infers a reasonable PE header from, from the state. It, um, it actually looks at the original file's PE header. Okay. And that that is... That is a really good point that it is looking at the original file's PE header. So if something is really messed up in that PE header, you're going to get that a lot too. But then we have tools like import reconstructor or um, Lord PE that can help you to uh, fix up a PE header as it were. There are certain things that can be changed within the PE header that will prevent it from, from loading, from executing, actually in Windows, but will mess up some of the analysis tools because they're going by the spec versus by, you know, what just works. Okay. So, ah, exercise. bserver.exe. Let me show you how we do it. 
Okay, let me first take these, put them there, grab, where is it? Dserver.exe. So, first thing I'll do is take a look in PID, see what's going on. Nothing found. Overlay uh, plugins, crypto analyzer, because I always do that just to see. Okay, let's bring up CFS Explorer and the identifier scan. Huh, nothing. Well, that's weird, it's not even detecting a compiler. Sometimes it's not just what is detected that is weird, but what's not detected. Import address table. Oh, kernel 32, load library, get proc address. Hmm. And minimal other imports. So we can say maybe packed here. Take a look at the sections. Zero, one, two. Those aren't typical section names. Okay. I will load this up in where's I Ida and take a look at it. Import segment seems to be destroyed. This may mean that the file was packed. Ida's helpful. Uh, it's saying, hey, something's weird here. This may be packed. You say, okay, maybe it is. We take a look here. We have this nice function. If we take a look at the functions list, only detected that one function. Look at all this gray up here. Lots of gray up here. Or we should see some blue saying, hey, I detect functions. So obviously there's something weird going on. So what was what was the first thing I said I'd usually do when I think there's a packer here? What do I look for? Get somebody online. What do I usually look for? Yeah, that's that's one example. A jump to a to a specific address, hard coded address. More generically, what do I look for? What's what's that an example of? Yeah, tail jump or or, or tail transition. Um, so okay, so let's let's take a look at this. Let me zoom in a little bit. So this is our function, and we see some some looping going on. See some stuff here moving around. Basically, what I'm looking for is a block here that uh, doesn't have an arrow coming out of it. Is I guess the short thing. So looking through, looking through, got arrows and arrows and lots of arrows. Come on, things. Arrow all over the place. Arrow, arrow. Anybody a Twilight fan? Oh, did I? Not Starboard. What's your point? Where'd I go? Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> These things are, are easy to me. Um, so we have this jump to a specific location, 403, 420. And even a pop A before it. <laughs> so we got this. The tail jump, and it's even even looks like it's using a, a pop A, and uh, where are we down here? And do we see a push A somewhere up here? Don't see a push A. There must have been a push A somewhere. Oh well, well we were yep down here. What's the difference between push A and push pop pop A? Hmm. What's the difference between the pop and the pop A? Oh, pop A pops all. Oh, okay. Yeah. So could it 
split it up or just push the thing there, that he cares about? And just pop everything. Well, there there may be a, a push A somewhere else in here. Excuse me. The main thing is we see this jump to a specific address. Okay. Excuse me. And when we go to that address, it's like, ah, there's nothing there. There's a whole lot of nothing. Don't know what's there. So that is likely our tail jump. And so if we load this up in Olidebug and we go to this location, which is, is close to port to DDEB, we'll see that. And I will show that to you right now. Port to DDEB. B server, I like Ollie. Quick statistical analysis says this might be packed or compressed. Tools can be helpful sometimes. Um, the huh, Ollie dump plug plugin. Okay. It's it's the it's the nicest way of dumping that I found, and this is typically why I do it. Um, if I don't have a need to do like scripting of it, the, the big thing that Immunity Debug will give you is that scripting capability. Okay. Um, so if you're if you're going to be doing a lot of, of debugging, I certainly recommend it. There's um, certain plugins that will work for both Ollie Debug and Immunity, but it's not necessarily always the case. Should be on the desktop. Uh, top. Oh, okay. Yeah, the entropy calculator for this file took large amounts of it, like 7.8. Yeah, so what all he did was it detected that and said, hey, this might be packed. Do you want me to continue analyzing, meaning, you know, interpreting things as, um, as instructions? Um, all the way through the code, or do you want me to just stop at what I've done so far? I said, you know, no, don't don't continue to analyze it because I do know this is this is packed. So what I'm going to do is, okay, where was it in Ida? Our tail jump here, 42 DDEB, and we'll go here. And Ollie is um, uh, just different enough in terms of shortcuts from, from Ida that it makes it confusing sometimes. But if you reference your sheet that I had handed out, um, or, or those online, uh, the sheet, if you had uh, looked that up, um, or even if you just look up all the debug shortcuts, um, there is a follow expression in view, control G, that's all these go. Whereas in, in Ida, you would just do G. In Ollie, you do Control G. And you can type in there a specific address. What was what was the address of the tail jump? Four, two, something? G, G, E, B. <laughs> what was that? G, D, E, B. D, D, E, B. And yep, pop A, jump. So if I were to go here, I would say I want to set a breakpoint. Toggle, and then I run, and we hit our breakpoint, and then I step into that F7, push EBP, move ESP, EBP. Hey, that looks that looks nice. Uh, yeah, that looks like a function prologue, and and all he's even saying, hey, this this call down here, kernel 32 get version. That's this this looks like this looks like a good place to dump from. So if I go to and this is why I, I like using Ollie plugins. Ollie dump doesn't come with Ollie debug by default, but you can find Ollie debug. Uh, I'm sorry, Ollie dump online um, very easily, and just putting the DLL into the Ollie debug directory enables it for use. Um, I say. Do you provide a worksheet with an install tool to go over? Um, the there are references within the wiki. Cool. Well, I'm not quite sure. I'll, I think all the stuff is on there. I'll double check. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
So I do Ollie dump, dump debug process, and this is one of the, the nicer things. It automatically says, oh, I'm going to change the entry point to point two where your current instruction is, which is great because we are at where we think the, the unpack code starts. Um, other other dumping tools, you have to you know, like go in and say, okay, change it to you know four three four two zero because this is the uh, the the offset off of the base. Um, and this is the other thing, all the debunk, uh, all the dump will do is it tries to rebuild the import table, and it has two different methods down here. Uh, I typically had the best luck with the, the first method will, where it will actually take a look at uh, jumps and, and calls based off of the disassembly in order to find a, uh, the import address table. And I will dump it, dump it out to, to disk and I'll call this you know, B server underscore unpacked dot ex underscore to prevent from accidentally executing it uncontrolled. Save, and then um, I take a look at no. close. <clears throat> if I take a look at this B server unpacked.ex underscore in EID, a Microsoft Visual C++ 5.0, and then I can do crypto analyzer because that's what I always do. Take a look at it in CFF Explorer. And if we take a look at our import directory, we now have a bunch of other imports that it identified in there. Whole bunch. Sections, same section names, but for a new one. What all dump will do is it'll add a new section and put the uh, imports that it detected in there. So you'll see this this new section. Here. And if we load that up in Ida, what we'll get, it's still going to complain saying, hey, something's funky with the, the import table. But when it actually loads it, we're going to see a bunch of blue up here now. We're going to see a, oh, it, it thinks it sees wind main with this jump to this other location. It's not, uh, didn't do a perfect analysis, but it did really good analysis because we're seeing these calls and actual API calls. And what we could do is go through this and actually analyze it now in Ida, which is easier to do than the flat disassembly of like all the debugger. Just a quick tip for the hardware, uh, or rather for setting the breakpoint on a location on the stack. Kind of the, the stack is down here in the lower right corner in the Ollie interface. You can right click on that and you can um, follow in dump and it'll show up over here. And then here you can right click on the uh, memory location and say um, breakpoint hardware on access. You want to make sure you do the, the D word because it'll be accessed as a D word. So if you just do the ordinary right click, it'll do a stop a software breakpoint. If you if you do breakpoint toggle, yeah, it'll do a software breakpoint. The main thing is following excuse me this process, looking for a excuse me, looking for a tail transition. Honestly, if you can at the very least do that, uh, that can get you past a lot of Packers or unpackers, rather. 
Um, so, so at least knowing how to do that, and then knowing that that maybe that this is possible, being able to identify, you know, hey, there's there's a push. I know I have to do something. Um, you know, you can either either Google it, shoot me an email, you know, what what have you. Um, but knowing of of these processes is the main thing. And like I said, this will surprisingly get you past a bunch of stuff.